Good morning and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. So right beside me today is the 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee. And today we're gonna to be having a look at this entire vehicle, walking around it. There's a lot of new features. So let's get started right now. All right, let's start with the walk around. Now, first off, this is the fifth generation of Grand Cherokee. Very, very important vehicle in the Jeep lineup. And under the hood though, what we're dealing with are two very veteran powertrains. So first of all, the 3.6 Pentastar engine, which makes 293 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. You can get a 5.7 liter V8 Hemi in here and that'll bump it up to 357 HP, 390 pound-feet of torque. But the key reason that you'd probably make that jump is for the increase in towing. Now, what we're looking at is an entirely new architecture. So let's talk about what we can't see, which is the frame. And because of people's want for a third row in just about every SUV of this size, they had to rebuild that entire architecture so that this vehicle is available in a two row, in a three row, and soon coming a hybrid model in the 22 model year, but probably more towards the spring. But up top, they've also changed the look of Grand Cherokee. It was much more rounded and bulbous. Now we're looking at a much more flat nose, a straight drop at the front side. And while the actual footprint isn't larger, the wheels have been drawn out from the vehicle on each side. So it just looks more blocky and more slabbed. And frankly, it's a look that I like. So if you want to come on down here, follow me, Steve. Okay. Towards the side here, one of the things of keynote is the glass. So the previous version tapered up towards the rear. It was a cool look, but if you've ever driven one, you found there were quite a few blind spots. So this time around, they've given you a lot more glass between the B pillar and the C pillar and the back end. As we move around to the back of the vehicle, same thing. The belt line is very straight, but it tilts towards the front and the backside is incorporated with those wraparound taillights. Overall, it's a good look. And the first impression I had today was that it stays in line with the classic Jeep look, but it's a very new look and one which doesn't seem out of place at all. Alrighty folks, now here we are driving in this new Grand Cherokee. Now the model that we're in right here is a limited with the 3.6 liter V6 and just the steel suspension. We do not have the air suspension on this model. Now the Grand Cherokee here, you know, the way I'm looking at it, it's basically brand new besides the powertrains. Of course, those are carryover, but new architecture, new suspension. So the way it drives is entirely changed. And now we'll throw it to Dad. You're driving. You've driven this thing for a few hours today. Uh, what do you feel? Yeah, I, I got a chance to drive it up here to Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. Um, so a lot of a lot of time on the highway. Um, it's nice. It's it's a lot tighter. That's that's the word that sort of jumps to mind than the old version. And uh, sound deadening is decent overall. Steering feel was good. So there are some significant changes from the previous generation and then when it does come to power dad um, this is the 3.6 v6 if you want to bump up to the hemi you can it's nice to have the option but from over here this feels like it's it's plenty of power for this vehicle yeah, yeah honestly it's not bad it, it <laughs> you know what it's fine it really is fine um, even for me it's like somebody said get this or the hemi like I said, unless I was uh, towing regularly, I wouldn't bother. Yeah. Yeah, this has plenty of power. The eight-speed auto, 
nice and smooth, no doubt about that. And, and then, then that 360 is a is a is a Ward's top ten engine and has been umpteen years. times for years. So that's another thing that you're getting. Yeah, plus they've built over a million of them. I don't know what the number is now, but it's you know so many Pentastars out there. So you have to feel like it's gotta be decently reliable because they've built so many of them. Right? Exactly, and that's one of the things that you know you guys the viewers are always talking about but is it going to be reliable well here's here's a situation where yeah we're dealing with proven technology so that's the way it drives totally different nicer nice and quiet in here the other major difference is this interior now the first thing i'll say is we just got out of the jeep grand wagoneer we compared it to the cadillac escalade you can see that here on the channel and basically what they've done here is they've adopted sort of one interior and then they just scale it up or down so grand wagoneer wagoneer grand cherokee they're all quite similar now in terms of the screen layout this passenger screen over here the rear seat entertainment all that stuff yeah they've kind of brought it in line and, and i kind of like that actually it gives it a a familial feel you know and then on onto it just looking at it it's, it's beautiful in here it's very luxurious the screens work well this screen in front of the passenger personally i think this is going to become more common excuse my nose i am a little sick you probably heard that i think this is going to become more common that i think this is something people are going to really jump onto and then we got to talk about the fact that it has a safety feature when you do look at it from an angle you can't see it clearly anymore mm. so i think they did their due diligence there and yeah I, I like this interior i have no complaints i like the interior and i also appreciate the fact that you know jeep always sticks with its heritage meaning that you know this vehicle has tremendous off-road capability if you equip it that way however the majority of grand cherokees are going to be sold to people who are not going off road all right they just want a larger suv and what they're looking for is comfort and they enjoy the finishings the the nice appointments uh, that's what's really going to matter to them and then they'll feel good about being able to say yeah i drive a jeep however these guys have really figured out who their market is so they know that some guys want to do the off-road thing they'll give you all those options but the majority like i say this interior is what's going to sell them and frankly they're playing in a very very competitive segment you think about the other vehicles in this segment such as explorer and pilot and highlander these are all vehicles that are significant so when these people are cross shopping you better give them something with a bit of a wow factor yeah and i think this grand cherokee has that you're right and then you mentioned off-roading. Well, if you really want to go off-road, you're going to get the Grand Cherokee Trailhawk. And we did have a chance to run an off-road today. You can check it out right here. Well, folks, now we're off-road here in the Grand Cherokee. Yes, we are. <laughs> and we're bashing around out here. Um, this is the Grand Cherokee Trailhawk that we're in here today. The one we're driving on road was not the Trailhawk, so they did bring the off-road model for the off-road course. And there's a bunch of new stuff here. I mean, all of the new stuff that just applies to the Grand Cherokee, but specifically here on the Trailhawk, you're talking about an e-locker in the rear end, which is also gonna act like a limited slip when it's not locked up. That's pretty cool. We have a full suite of cameras here, including that front facing camera. That's always nice when you're off-road. And then off-road pages. This is gonna offer all kinds of information, pitch and roll, what's locked up, what's not locked up, where the power is going, all that kind of stuff. So uh, again, a really, really cool off-road features here on the Grand Cherokee. And then the other, maybe the biggest one, Dad, a, a disconnecting front sway bar. That's something the Wrangler has had forever. Now the Grand Cherokee has it. Now, of course, we're fully independent suspension here all the way around, but because you get that sway bar in the front disconnectable, you get way more articulation and you can see how it works right here. All right, so this is our second time through the offset call them whoops uh, I've disconnected the sway bar you can see on camera the first time through I mean it, it just dropped into the holes really hard obviously these are deep so we still have that issue here however um, much less so which is what you'd expect with the sway bar disconnected if I got one complaint it's just that it takes a while to get the thing to disconnect 
you got to mess with it and then you roll forward and then you wait and then you mess with it and you know I mean it finally it works but it could be quicker now there is air suspension here as well you can of course get that on many of the Grand Cherokee models but off-road it really helps because it's going to lift the body up you're getting over 11 inches of ground clearance it's a five inch lift that it can uh, bring you up it's significant plus it's way quicker now Jeep says quicker to come up quicker to go down that's always appreciated too now I think the biggest noticeable difference about the suspension is that there is more wheel travel now and the shocks actually now adjust their damping they are active shocks what that means is that at full height, like we are right now, the Grand Cherokee is not that stiff. And that wasn't always the case. In the old Grand Cherokee, at full height, it was unbelievably stiff because those airbags, they had no more give in them, right? They're all the way pumped up. That's not the case here. Now you can be at full height, off-road, bouncing around, and it's actually, it doesn't feel like it's bottoming out. It feels like it's pretty comfortable, wouldn't you say? I would, absolutely. And of course, the thing is, is to keep reminding myself that I'm in a Grand Cherokee versus in something like Wrangler, which of course is built for this sort of thing. Sure. So there is a two-speed transfer case here, of course, so we do have a proper four low. The other thing we have is drive modes. Now, the footage you saw at the beginning, the Grand Cherokee was in auto, so we were letting its natural traction control get us through all of those offset ruts. And it did well, but then I put it into sand and mud and all of that hesitation that it has when it lifts a wheel totally goes away. The front is brake-based traction control. It just starts sending power. The rear, when it's not locked, that's a limited slip. It's sending power. So the drive modes here too make a significant difference. Finally, the last system here we should mention is select speed control. Uh, like everyone else, this is off-road cruise control. This is becoming very standard around the industry. Here on the Jeep, you control it using the paddle shifters. I do like that there are still paddles, so that's kind of nice. Uh, we used it for a couple minutes. It's nice and smooth and quiet. And once again, that's actually becoming the norm. Um, and you know what, Dad? I've been saying this recently. I'll, I'll ask you on camera. I think I know the answer. If we were out here today having fun, would you be using Select Speed on your own? Would no. you choose to use it? That's, that's where my problem comes into it. It's just like, I get where they're going with it, but we've reached this point where they're struggling for things to find. And I think they're like, yeah, that sounds cool. When it's like, realistically, I don't, I don't want it. I don't need it. Well, yeah, and, and I think a lot of guys will understand what I'm saying, which is, um, you know, my steering, my gas, my brake, my modulation, I like to get better and better at it. And when I have a, a nice smooth run, I feel good about it because I did it. Um, if the vehicle's going to do it all, well, then I'm just a passenger, aren't I? Yeah. When it comes to fuel economy, Jeep says there is a small improvement here, and now you can see the numbers. Interesting side note that I got in the uh, product briefing this morning was the fact that this vehicle is now being built at a brand new plant called Mack Avenue in Detroit which means that the old plant is going out of production. However, these guys, they, Stellantis loves to do this thing where, you know what, they're gonna hold over production of the old model at least somewhere into at least half of the 22 model year. So they are, in essence, offering a Grand Cherokee Classic right alongside this brand new Grand Cherokee. Now, if the Ram is any indication they did the same thing uh, with Ram uh, and initially said that the Ram Classic would be sold for one year we're now going into year four they're still cranking them out so you know what and if there's a price difference significant price difference there uh, I think this is actually not a bad business model and that's what I was just about to get to is exactly that, the price. You have to imagine the person walking into the dealership. You have the brand new model. By the way, this model, more expensive for 2022. No surprise there. So you walk into the dealer and the dealer says, look, so we have this Grand Cherokee over here with a beautiful new interior, or we have this one with the exact same powertrain in it and not the same interior, but it's significantly cheaper, $10,000 easily cheaper. And, and when you look at them, you go, sure, I'll take the old one because yeah, I'm gonna save all that money. And that's what's been happening with Ram. 
And that's another thing, which other companies have done it. It's not a brand new idea, but it seems like maybe it's gonna become more popular just to give people you know, more choice. Well, from a production point of view, you've got to be in a situation where you're, you're stopping one line and starting a new line, usually in different places. Mm -hmm. So that kind of goes with it. But if you happen to be in that situation, hey man, the plant's played for, the tooling's already paid for, why not keep cranking them out, right? So yeah. anyway, an interesting little side note there. Sure, and now with Grand Cherokee L, you got the long wheelbase version, you can get the three row, you can get this version, or get the classic. So we always say this, I'll say it again, more choice is better for you as a customer. Absolutely. Well, everybody, that's our first look at the 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee. And if you're wondering why I'm doing all this stuff here today, it's because Steven's so snotty that he sounds like he's talking holding his nose. So he promised me a donut and I said I would do all this stuff. So that's it for this one however we will be getting it back in the near future where you know we want to do more with it and we will so please come back soon see what we're up to but before you go remember to go below hit like hit subscribe and please join the channel all right i need money to retire on and come back soon to see what we're doing at truck king